Hey everybody, back with another Super Pac-Man repair video. I have done two so far. The first one, I kind of introduced you. I said I got all these Super Pac-Man boards. I bought them off a of cloth in a bulk. And I actually have, this is um, enough for like, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six complete board sets um, and plus an extra CPU board and I already fixed two of them I'll link to that video here then I got three boards from delusionals arcade and I just got through finishing those three boards so I figured why not let's um, put some other boards on this um, video is just going to focus on three CPU boards I have a working video board right here and I'm going to use these three uh, test and troubleshoot these three, three CPU boards. All of them have issues. Um, I'll go one by one, obviously. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I'll be All right, right back. We're going to start with this board here. Um, I don't know why. Did I put that check mark there? I doubt it. I don't know what the hell that is. Um, Sound ROM is not doesn't have a cover on it. I might have started troubleshooting this before. I have no freaking idea. Um, this is a Rev E, Rev E board, which is kind of interesting because I've seen a lot of Rev F's, two Rev D's, but this is the only Rev E that I have seen so far. It is missing a capacitor at C31, so obviously that needs to be fixed. If we just look, go through the board here. The chips need to be removed, the board cleaned. Again, maybe I burned a new ROM there. I, I don't even know what what's going on there. RAM is original, original. There's been zero work done on this board. The connectors do not look great. Um, once I clean the board and remove the chips, we'll be able to, we'll Dremel those and get them a little bit better. I don't see anything broken. Um, this RM17, I wonder if that's just an extra pin right there going to nothing. That might be the case. I'll have to look at a different board there. Yeah, I don't, nothing's jumping out at me as being broken. Or missing besides that one capacitor. Uh, I don't know what's going on over here. Let me look at another board. Okay, that's normal. R7, C1, R43, those are all typically missing. Got our crystal there. Uh, Yeah, I don't see anything else missing per se. So let's go ahead and power this thing up and see what, what right, it gives here we us. Go. Well, it's completely frozen. Doesn't do anything. I hear a little bit of noise. We definitely need to replace that capacitor C31, but I doubt that's a reason it's not booting. So the the first thing I might do is interesting. I'm just listening to that. It's funny, huh? So let me um, go ahead and remove all the chips, clean the chip legs, clean the board. Replace C31 and then come back. All right, I cleaned the board. I dremeled the uh, connectors over here. Uh, let's see here. Um, Replace all the chips, put some deoxit on the sockets, put every chip in once, removed it, put it back in, so reseated it. Um, and that's all I've done so far. I still need to replace these caps or a C31. And the colors look a little weird. 
I hear this noise, but it booted. So obviously cleaning the board literally fixed this damn thing. Minus, I bet that um, noise that we hear is because of C31. But the colors look a little weird. And I don't know why. Color, it looks a little dim or something. I don't know if this board is actually 100%. Maybe this video board's not right. I need to maybe um, use my other video board. Because, yeah, it look, that look... That looks weird. The colors look odd. Alright, I put in a different video board that I believe works, and it's the same symptom, like... It's just like the colors are slightly off. It's not as bright or something. I don't know what the hell is going on there. But first I'm going to do this caps here to make sure that that's fixed. Alright, it looks much better. I replaced the cap right here. 220. Microfarad. And the colors are better now. It was like... I don't know if it's my monitor or what. This is a different video board, but um, it had the same effect. <clears throat> I can't talk right now. <clears throat> it had the same impact before, but now, it, like, the whites are much white. The colors are right. I mean, maybe it just took a little time for it to be powered up and stuff. I'm not sure. But it looks perfect. Like, this board is working. This CPU board's fixed. All I did is clean the board... Deoxit. When I clean the board, I actually use um, toilet bowl cleaner like um, RK Jason showed. And I typically just leave that on there for a few minutes and then rinse it off and dry it. So, easy fix. Alright, CPU board number two. I was looking this over here. Um, this resistor pack here, which I can't even read... It's folded over. I don't know if that's any good or not. Gotta look at that. Um, it's missing 2D, which is a RAM. It's missing 4A, which is a PROM. And overall, I just need to remove the chips, clean it. Look how that capacitor is. I mean, it's so far off the board, it's kind of weird. I'm going to clean these up clean the board it does have an X on it obviously it's not working it's missing two chips um, it's also got a busted capacitor here so like a decoupling capacitor right there that's not a big deal I mean we can replace it but it's not gonna prevent it from working um, this prom at 1m the PAL actually looks like it's kind of bent around so I'm gonna have to remove that clean that RM 17 look at that it's completely busted um, so that's not good obviously that might be actually one of the problems RM 17 there is jacked up I'm gonna remove that remove all the chips clean the board and We'll see where we can go. I'm going to replace RM17. Definitely check for A, 2D. It looks like they were moved pretty cleanly. Um, but I'll, I'll double check them and then we'll see where we're at. Alright, so I did um, remove that resistor pack on RM17. I don't know why is that so blurry. Um, and that looks bad. That's this one... 1k three of them are okay so i could still use that um but this was broken off there these two and then i also looked at rm16 i think it was folded over it didn't look right it definitely a couple of them were reading out of um spec there i think the the very last one so i put in a it was originally a nine pin put in a 10 pin because they had an extra hole there which is nice of them so I still need to get a resistor pack there. I also replaced, I put a socket here at 4A. And 
I believe there was only one trace that was or pad that was kind of screwed up from the whoever removed it before me so I put a little jumper right there as you can see there just fed some kynar wire down through and then did the other side and just soldered it right there so I think everything is good on that on that so the only other thing is I did notice this there is a scratch right here I don't think any traces are damaged but I need to check that because there's a decent scratch right there so I'm gonna ohm those out as well just to double check oh I need this I need a socket here at 2d as well forgot about that let me let me knock that all out. right just it looks like this board has had a little bit of a rough life getting scratches and then I was put some um, flux over here and there's a definitely a broken trace as you can see right there and but this 2d looks pretty good so that was removed pretty cleanly another broken decoupling capacitor right here it's probably like 0.1 microfarads or something like that so I clean that up I'm not gonna replace them right away it takes like two seconds and they're not that not a big deal let's see here can you see that right there yeah I had to do some repairs right, right there I don't even know how good that looks but I just even this ground trace I think that's a ground trace or no five volts right there was busted there was a big scratch right there so I did one two three four five six seven maybe <laughs> um, repairs oh boy hopefully I got I them all. fixed that trace right here by 2c um, put in a new RAM at 2d that was missing had a steel a 368 4a from another board temporarily because I couldn't find any of those I've put let me see I don't know what time it is but I put more time into this board than it's probably worth let's power it on oh that's not good <laughs> just frozen I might just um, remove the chips and verify the chips in my working board um, first just to make sure the CPUs are working and the customs are working and stuff. I was booting up, I was getting ready to uh, put the board I just fixed um, in here and remove the chips and I powered it up and again I have like the weird colors now now the colors look good again it was kind of just acting weird listen to that sound that sounds terrible but I noticed I don't have any capacitor at C89. So I'm wondering if that's part of the problem. I didn't have a sound issue before. I had replaced this. Interesting. So anyway, let me put a capacitor in here. All right, I replaced that cap and it looks better on boot up now. Um, but the sound I think was, is the socket I had to press down on 3M. It was sounding a little weird as soon as I pressed down on it, um, that cleared up the sound. So sounds good. Probably need to clean the legs on that thing. But anyway, back to, you know, troubleshooting the other board. Okay. All the chips verified fine. All the socketed chips verified fine in the other board. Now, I don't know if this was the issue. I did measure power. I was getting around 4.7 volts or and um, 4.6 volts over here. So it was a little low. And the um, the connectors um, were very, he very heavily oxidized. Like it was almost brown. I probably didn't get a good job filming it. But I did go through two cheap steel brushes on my Dremel trying to clean, clean them up. So cleaned them up the best I can I don't know if that was the issue but now at least my connectors slide on relatively easy it was super hard to get them on and off before so let me um, fix this one and then this come back power related look at that damn thing booted up oh no sound <laughs> there we go just turn up the volume nice the reason it wasn't booting was the heavily oxidized uh, connectors over here use the Dremel clean those up 
Um, I did not clean the chip legs on this one, but I did all the repairs on the new um, 4A. Had to do um, new chip there, new RAM, you know, trace repairs and stuff like that. But obviously that was worth it. I don't see any, you know, glitches or anything like that because obviously I'm using the same graphics board. But all right. Number, CPU board number two looks to be good to go. I might replace this capacitor because that's kind of um, odd looking right there. And I do still need to put in two decoupling caps right there, actually. So I'm going to do that. Okay, actually. this is board number three, CPU board three. It's Rev F. Um, I had socketed 4A because I needed to steal the 36. What was it? 36, no, 3, whatever, 368, um, that's what it is, LS368. Anyway, um, it says here IOB is bad, but um, I guess I had checked these in another board previously. I don't remember when I did that, but I put a check mark by them, so I assume the IO chips are good since it has a check mark by them, but not sure. Let's go ahead and power it on. I did it once over. It doesn't look like it has any damage to the board. It is a little bit warped um, at the corners and stuff, but nothing too bad. So let's see if we get anything. Yeah, it's booting. Could be anticlimactic here. Oh, it does say IO2. So something's wrong with IO2, which I think is 4C, not 4F. Um, so I'll... I'll We'll look into that, but first I'm going to clean this board, so I'm going to take off all the chips, wash it, and all that stuff, and then we'll come back and look at it. Alright, got the board washed and dry, and go ahead and uh, re-put all the chips in. Just double checking, make sure I got them in the right way. It's powered on. What are we getting? IO2. So we're still getting IO2. And that is 4C. So I'm going to swap 4C and 4F just to double check. And then I'm going to have to get the schematics Swap out. those around. Still IO2. So yeah, it's not following the chip. So time for schematics all right I'm looking at the schematic this is a uh, 4c and there's really not much to it you know you have um, I think I showed this in a different video but whatever um, this resistor pack here pulls the dip switches high so unless they're you know activated and then um, then it'll go low but they're these inputs are pulled high if they're not if the dip switches aren't activated this is your uh, cocktail test switch, and that's pretty much it. There's some capacitors there and some resistors and capacitors for those. Those are inputs. <clears throat> and then dip switch um, 5E is basically um, multiplex. So there's eight inputs, and it's multiplex, and pin 1 is determining which if, if A or B is active, basically. Um, so that, that's 4E. And so I'm guessing, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what the test code does, but maybe it's saying, can I read, get a reading for all of these dip switches? Like, can this custom output from the data all, what it based on, you know, for all these inputs? So I'm going to look at, you know these inputs and see if they're measuring 4.7k basically verify the resistor pack so turn all the dip switches off and make sure it's you know 4.7k to plus 5 volts all right, let's see if we can do get this done there we go you can see that is the light better i don't know washes that out all right so um first thing you can do is just come to you know plus 5 volts and then pins you know 21 22 
no, this is 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 7, yeah, right there. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All of those are reading 4.7K. <clears throat> and then if I come to 4E, pin 2 is one of the inputs to 5 volts. That doesn't look good. 0.9 million ohms. <laughs> um, so 2 and 3 are inputs, and then 4 should be an output. And then 5 and 6. So... I think this resistor pack here at RM3 is bad because all my dip switches, I guess it could be the dip switches, let me activate them. <clears throat> but if they're all off, oh look at that, was it my dip switch? They just cleared up. 4.4k. .4 4.4k. 4.4k. All right. Well, maybe the, maybe the just the dip switch just needed to be activated. Some it wasn't. There was some crud in there making that reading bad. Let's go ahead and power it up. <clears throat> Nope, still IO2. <laughs> so that's not a problem. The other thing that could be an issue, I got my Logic Pro hooked up here. I'm about to run out of battery or memory, I'm not sure which. Is port, there's one. Okay, well now I'm, I'm looking good because these are reading high, which is good. Um, RM16 it's wrong in the schematic but I don't know if this is reading correctly either because it's kind of like damaged right here I don't know if you can see that um hmm let me see if pin 1 actually changes at all on, on boot it's not changing I mean, you would think that would toggle at least once on boot up. All right, because we tested, you know, these chips in the other, I already tested them in the, um, did I test them? I think I did. I think they're good. The chips are good. Or we swapped them and the behavior didn't change anyway. Um, and so I'm looking for other things like on the output and a couple, you know, some of the outputs go to this custom. I think if that custom is bad, though, it will say I/O one. But then you come up. Some of the outputs are all shared between both chips, 4C and 4F, and that comes up to 3E, which gets multiplexed with the main address line into the memory 2114. So the program, the test code must be reading out of 2114 and I wanted to just probe around look at the outputs 4, 7, 9, and 12 here. Alright we still got our IO2 there um, so pin 4 Let's see here 3E let me take off my glasses because I can't even damn see alright there's 1, 2, 3, 4 Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So those look okay. But if I put my logic comparator on it, It 
says I have pin 12 is doesn't look good that's what my logic comparator is showing so that's my best clue um, going to swap it out I guess and see if we can get past that error all right got that replaced 3e I have no idea if this is going to fix it sometimes logic comparator is not a perfect thing let's see oh now we have IO1 <laughs> so we I guess it's better than what it was. Let's see if I put my comparator on here. Yeah, it's reading good. It's upside down, but it's reading good. So now we have IO1, which is this bad boy, and uh, hmm. Back, not completely to the drawing board, but that's a different problem. <clears throat> Past IO2, we got IO1. Alright, I'm checking the outputs here. It's pin 9, 10, 11, 12, I think are four of them. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, 9 is low. 10, 11, 12, and then I think yeah, these are the other ones right there. These are outputs. So, pin 9 is low, and that's an output on both of these, and that goes to 4B, and it also goes to this resistor network here at R2. Alright, we might have another resistor pack issue um, that output comes over here on R2 you can see that that and then if I measure that to um, 5 volts it's supposed to be 4.7 K and I'm getting 15 million um, so I'd, maybe that resistor pack is bad R, RM2. I did replace RM16, which I think is labeled incorrectly in the in the uh, schematic, but that it actually tested fine. I don't know what I did with it, but is this it? Yeah, that one right there. That actually tested fine, but I replaced it because the top was kind of chipped and but I don't know. I'm going to remove this measure it out of circuit obviously you can't always measure them in circuit but I did compare it to another board and the other board reads fine so all right yep definitely had a problem there pin one to pin two it's completely open to all of them So bad resistor pack at RM2. Let's go ahead and power it on. Actually, let me make sure I got everything connected right. There we go. Seems to be working. Awesome. We'll go in the test mode here real quick. Yep, everything seems to be working. Um, you can check the dip switches and stuff like that. But <clears throat> Alright, that's it. That's uh, three CPU boards. Um, this one actually had the most issues that we had to fix, but uh, that was relatively simple um, tracking that down. So, all right, that's it, guys. Till next time.